Number nine. Do you have children? <laughs> Welcome to Screen Recaps. Today we are going to recapping the movie Vivarium. Gemma, a kindergarten teacher, and her boyfriend Tom, a school groundskeeper, are searching for a new home to start a family. They visit Yonder, a new real estate company, where they meet Martin, who tells them about a subdivision perfect for young couples. Although Martin behaves strangely, Tom and Gemma listen to him. Martin invites them to Yonder, but Gemma is hesitant. Martin insists that the low prices attract more people and the houses could run out soon. Gemma agrees to a quick look, and they follow Martin to Yonder, where they find rows upon rows of indistinguishable houses. Gemma and Tom visit House 9 with Martin as their guide. They explore the rooms but decline Martin's offer of drinks and snacks. Upstairs they find a nursery and reveal they have no children. Martin imitates Gemma, which unsettles them. When they go outside, Martin vanishes and his car is gone. They try to leave but keep returning to House 9, unable to get reception on their phones. They drive for hours, always ending up back at House 9. Their car runs out of gas, so they reluctantly enter the house and eat tasteless food. The next day, Tom climbs the roof and realizes the houses in yonder seem endless. Tom suggests they head west, following the setting sun until they reach the edge. They walk for hours, overcoming obstacles and staying on course. Exhausted, they stumble upon a house with lights on, only to realize it's house nine again. Gemma discovers a box of food and supplies outside and calls out to the mysterious deliverer. Tom empties the box and sets fire to the house, hoping for help. They sleep on the curb and wake up to another box. Inside, they find a baby boy who appears to age rapidly. The child mimics their words and demands to be measured. Surprisingly, he's only three months old and cries for breakfast. In silence, the couple joins him to eat. And afterwards, Tom collects their leftovers and trash in a box. Outside, Tom and Gemma sit on the lawn, waiting for the trash collector. Gemma doubts their efforts, as the garbage is never collected when they watch. Tom corrects her, revealing that the boy who always watches them is not human. Tom smokes a cigarette and drops it on the grass, which opens up to reveal dirt. Intrigued, Tom starts digging with a pickaxe, and Gemma joins him. The box of trash mysteriously disappears, but when Gemma tries to tell Tom, he ignores her. That night, the couple gets intimate while the boy secretly watches. The next day, Tom continues digging, creating a large mound of dirt. Gemma is occupied with laundry, and the boy becomes captivated by a strange feed on the TV. Tom and Gemma find solace in their car as it's the only thing that feels real to them. They accidentally turn on the car radio and start dancing, but the boy watching them trips Tom. In anger, Tom slams the boy onto the asphalt, but he appears unharmed and continues dancing. Later, Gemma tucks the boy into bed and explains that they can't always be with him. The boy calls Gemma his mother before saying goodnight. Gemma and Tom are disturbed by the boy's behavior. The boy screams and begs Gemma to be his mother, but she is disgusted and leaves him. Later that night, Tom is not in the mood for intimacy and apologizes. The next day, the boy wakes them up with screaming and they have breakfast. Gemma tries to talk to Tom, but he is not in the mood. Tom continues digging and hears a strange sound from underground. At night, he hears the sound again and finds the boy watching TV. Gemma turns it off, but the boy continues watching. Their situation with the boy is becoming more difficult. In the end, they give up and abandon him. The next day, the boy screams once again, demanding breakfast. Tom reaches his breaking point and grabs the boy, locking him in the car with the intention of starving him. Gemma protests, but Tom restrains her. He forcefully brings Gemma inside and confronts her explaining that the boy controls her, forcing her to act as his mother. Eventually, Tom releases Gemma and declares that she can no longer assist the boy. He argues that whoever gave them the child must intervene to prevent him from starving. Gemma questions if they will just stand by and let the boy die. Tom corrects her, insisting that the child is not a boy nor human. 
urging her to stop referring to him as such. Gemma takes the car keys and retrieves the boy, apologizing and assuring him that Tom won't harm him. Tom watches menacingly as Gemma and the boy leave. At night, Tom continues to dig. He desperately tries to communicate with the voices he hears underground. In the house, Gemma explains dreams to the boy, and they sleep together. Tom wakes up in the morning, coughing as he enters the house. Gemma and the boy leave without saying anything. Tom has a silent breakfast. Gemma and the boy have a picnic in a field. Gemma asks the boy what shapes the clouds resemble, and he says they look like clouds. Gemma tells him that outside of yonder, clouds come in different shapes. At night, Gemma cries in bed while Tom sleeps outside. The next day, Gemma realizes the boy is missing and searches for him in the neighborhoods. She finds him by the hole, where he gives her a book without answering her question. Gemma discovers a book filled with strange symbols and diagrams about humans. Tom refuses to sleep in the house and develops a coughing fit from sleeping in a hole. Gemma talks to a boy who reveals he met someone but can't say who or what it was. She invites him to play pretend, and he mimics Tom and Gemma before growling and producing an ungodly sound. Gemma is terrified and cries, wanting to go home, but the boy tells her she's already home. Time passes, and the child grows into a man. Gemma serves him dinner, and he questions why she is still polite to him. He wonders if she is afraid of him, but Gemma is unsure. She then takes food to Tom, who is locked in their bedroom. They eat together, and Gemma expresses regret for not allowing Tom to kill the man when he was young. After their meal, Gemma cleans Tom in the bathroom, noticing his bruises. Later, Gemma plans to follow the man, but he seems to disappear and reappear, making it impossible for her to keep up. That night, Tom discovers a bag with a body inside while digging. Terrified, he calls out to Gemma, who responds. Gemma races desperately towards the sound of Tom's voice, finally reaching him, carrying him back to their home. She discovers the door locked and pleads for entry, but the man inside ignores her. They are forced to spend the night in their car. The next day, as the man leaves, Gemma begs him for help as Tom's condition worsens. With a smile, the man suggests it's time to release Tom. Leaving them behind, Gemma cradles Tom on the sidewalk, remembering their first meeting and how he found comfort in her apartment. Tom closes his eyes and stops breathing. The man returns with a box containing a body bag for Tom. Overwhelmed with grief, Gemma breaks down and the man cruelly imitates her sorrow. He places Tom in the body bag and throws him into the hole Tom had dug. Gemma waits for the man to leave the house and attacks him with a pickaxe, but he dodges and crawls under the sidewalk. Gemma follows him and finds herself in a strange red-tinted living room with a different boy watching TV. She goes to the kitchen and finds a sobbing woman. The floor opens up and Gemma falls into a bedroom where a couple is having intercourse and a man is applauding. She sinks into the floor again and finds a dead man in the tub. Gemma returns to house nine and asks the man about yonder, but he tells her she is a mother and her only purpose is to die. The man places her in a body bag, and Gemma says all she and Tom ever wanted was a home. The man laughs once again, telling her she's already home. As the man zips up the bag, Gemma lets out one final remark, telling the man that she is not his mother. The man then drags Gemma down the stairs before throwing her into the hole with Tom. He covers up the hole, gets Tom's car, and drives out of yonder. He arrives back in town to yonder's small office and finds Martin waiting for him. Martin has aged dramatically, barely able to move. Martin hands the man his name tag, and the man gets a body bag from a drawer and places Martin inside. The man then folds up the body bag with Martin inside and it crunches up, fitting into a drawer. The man then sits at the desk, waiting for another hopeful couple, eager to take them to yonder. I thought I was good.